The Kaioprico Heist is the best solo money-making method in all of GTA Online, but there's a lot of confusion about how much money you can actually make from it. I know there's a bunch of YouTubers saying you can make three, four, five million dollars from this heist solo. That's clickbait, that's rubbish. So we're gonna go over how much money you can actually expect to make from this heist and how to maximize the profit you're gonna make. I've got a bunch of tips that are gonna save you guys a lot of time and hopefully make you more money as well. So if you enjoy the video, a thumbs up would be great appreciated and consider subscribing for more stuff like this and let's jump in starting off with the first tip and this one is for all of the setup and prep missions everyone knows that you can drive the submarine and everyone's sort of getting caught up in that hype but what a lot of people haven't realized is you can actually fast travel right across the map in the submarine for two thousand dollars which is pretty much nothing initially it's gonna be ten thousand dollars to fast travel in your submarine but once you complete the heist for the first time that's gonna drop down to two thousand which i mean for the time you save two thousand dollars is absolutely worth it so during your prep setups when the equipment spawns on the complete opposite side of the map instead of grabbing a helicopter and a presser a boat maybe and driving all the way up there you can just fast travel right next to the objective fly over there and do it really quickly and another thing you should be doing as well is once you get out of your submarine return it to storage and then once you get the item you need for your prep just request your kasatka again and it's going to spawn as close as possible to you so the strategy you should be using is fast traveling your sub to the objective returning the sub and then calling the sub to you once you have the equipment that you need in that prep this is going to save you valuable minutes every single setup mission which when you do all of the setup missions could save you like half an hour per heist the next tip is only to do the setup and prep missions that you actually need to. It's easy to get caught up in wanting to do all of the prep missions, you know, just to make it that little bit easier or just in case this happens, you know, I want the enemies to have worse weapons, for example. But most people actually try to complete this heist in stealth. So when you're doing it in stealth, you don't have to do any of the optional setup missions. The only ones you should be doing are your one approach vehicle, your one weapon loadout, and then three of the four equipment missions. So you should be doing either the key codes or the plasma cutter. You should be doing the blowtorch instead of the explosives. And then of course, you're gonna need to do the fingerprint cloner every single time. When it comes to the three optional ones, so the weapons, armor, and air support, all of those are actually only gonna matter if you get detected. So for a lot of people, this is gonna be a waste of time. If you did want to do these optional setups anyway, there's actually a sort of bug going around at the moment. So what you have to do is just start up one of these optional prep missions, then go into your menu, find a new session. And once you get in that new session, the setup you started is actually gonna be completed. I don't know how long that's going to be in the game for. It might even be patched by the time you're watching this video, but I thought that's a tip I should share anyway. The next tip that is going to both save you and cost you money, it's going to cost you money in the short term, but save you a lot in the long run, is you should buy the Sparrow. Now, this is one of the moon pool vehicles for your submarine, and it is almost $2 million. So like I said, it's an expensive one. This isn't necessarily completely urgent, but it's something you should look at buying in the long run if you're going to play this heist a lot. Because what this allows you to do is actually, instead of, taking a boat all the way back to the mainland every single setup mission you can just go to your helicopter in your submarine take the heli out and fly across to wherever you need to go this is going to save you like i said minutes every single setup which is going to save you a lot of time over the course of a heist and the fact that the sparrow is actually really quick as well it's sort of like a buzzard mark ii it's actually a vehicle that i recommend a lot of people buy anyway even if you're not doing the heist so like I said, it's not completely urgent. This is more of a luxury for the people that have more money. But like I always say, in GTA, time is money. So spending this extra bit of money is going to save you time, which is going to save you money in the long run. The next tip I want to give is about the primary target loot that you can get. Right now, there's five different primary targets that you can get in the vault. The first one is tequila for 900,000. The second one is a ruby necklace for 1 million. Bearer bonds for 1.1 million. The pink diamond for 1.1 point three madrazo files for 1.1 and then there's a hidden sixth one which we saw in the trailers that's the panther statue that one's going to be 1.9 million dollars which is absolutely insane but that one's not released right now i think that one's going to be released on a limited time basis sort of like we saw with diamonds in the casino vault so my tip for you here is if you get the worst one so tequila you can actually cancel the heist and restart the heist with a different vault content the best one you can get right now is the pink diamond for 1.3 on normal mode and 1.43 on hard mode so if you get tequila for example just cancel the heist all you have to do is finish the setup
set up mission call Pavel in your submarine click on cancel the heist and then set up a new one which is going to cost $25,000 but if you can go from tequila at 900,000 to a pink diamond at 1.3 million that $25,000 is going to be worth it I pretty much only recommend doing this if you get the tequila because if you get something that's worth a million or more I don't really think it's worth the time to cancel it and then chancing your hand at getting the pink diamond a lot of people are completing all of the setups and the finale for this heist in around an hour so if you get something that's over a million dollars you may as well just do it but if you get the worst one that option is always there to cancel and restart the next tip I want to go over is hard mode. A lot of people don't know how to start hard mode. I didn't know how to start it for a while. The way you start hard mode in the Kaya Perica heist is once you finish a heist, you pretty much need to start the next one as soon as you can. There's a short time window once you complete a heist between finishing that one and starting up a new one. If you set up a new heist within that time limit, you're going to be on hard mode. The time limit is 48 minutes, so one in-game day. So go back to your submarine, start it up, and get that hard mode buff. And basically what that's gonna do is give you a 10% money increase on your primary target. So for example, the ruby necklace is normally worth 1 million on hard mode, it'll be worth 1.1. I've been through the heist on both normal and hard mode and I pretty much can't even notice a difference other than you're gonna get one extra fingerprint hack that you're gonna need to do. Everything else is pretty much the same. It's not any more difficult than the normal mode. So I definitely recommend doing it on hard mode if you can. The next tip I've got is try to complete the Elite Challenge. Now the Elite Challenge in all of the previous heists has been relatively difficult, but this one is extremely easy, especially if you're playing solo. All you need to do for the Elite Challenge is complete the heist in under 15 minutes, fail zero hacks, and have everyone completely fill up their loot bags. This is really easy to do, especially if you're entering via the drainage tunnel and leaving through the main dock. Without even trying to go as fast as I could, I've completed it using this method in under 10 minutes i think a lot of people should be able to do that to be honest and if you can manage to do that you're going to get an extra fifty thousand dollars which i mean it just makes this one of the best money making methods in the game and definitely the best solo money making method in the game so if you want that extra bit of money do the elite challenge or just try it for fun i find it a good challenge to do that next up we're going to go over the route you should be taking in the scope out missions because i know a lot of people are struggling with getting caught and not really knowing which items to scope out so like I said, the method you should be using is going in via the drainage tunnel in the finale and leaving through the main dock. So what that means is you're pretty much only going to need to scope out the secondary targets at the main dock. Don't go wasting your time scoping out things at the airstrip, at the north dock, all of that. So anyway, this is the path I use. I'll let that play in the background. You're essentially going to want to go straight to the communications tower, hack in, find what's in the main vault. And if you're not playing solo, look at all the other cameras, try and get all the secondary loose spawns as well. If you're playing solo all you need is the basement one and then have a look at office cam one and office cam two because you can get painting spawns in there that you can access solo so i'll let this play through and then i'll talk to you in a second Once you get to the communications tower, what I like to do is I just parachute off right down to the main dock, and then I take photos of the secondary loot that I might need to access there. Once you've done that, just get caught by security. It's gonna kick you back to the airstrip, and then you can just finish the scope out mission really quickly. 
And the final thing I want to talk about is the secondary loot values. A lot of people are really confused as for which is the best secondary target. You've got gold, coke, art, weed, and cash. The best one is gold, but you can't get that as a solo player. If you're not solo though, definitely get as much gold as you can. From there, coke is the best. It's going to get you the most money. Then art and cash are pretty similar on payouts. The only difference is cash is only going to take a quarter of your bag. Art is going to take half of your bag. So you're going to need two things of cash in order to get the equivalent of roughly one artwork. And then weed is the worst one. So definitely try to prioritize the coke and artwork if you can as a solo player. If not, if you have friends to play with then prioritize gold then coke artwork cash weed in that order another great tip as well is while you're going down to the main vault there actually is a hidden safe in this office here so always grab this hidden safe I've had it spawn as low as $50,000, but I've had it spawn money as high, like as almost $100,000. So that's a nice little bonus that you should take every time. And that wraps it up. I hope that video helped you out and helped you make more money in this heist and save a bit of time as well. If it did, a thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. Consider subscribing for more stuff like this. If you've got any video suggestions, leave them below. I hope you're staying safe and I'll see you in the next video. Poise. Paper, I've been on my grind since I was